What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Friday, January 5th, 2018. Happy I'm Kind of Funny Day. Happy. Oh, yeah, it's our, hey, it's our, our, it's our real Independence Day. It's our real Independence Day. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah, we forgot about that. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Greg's, Greg Miller. Not mm. Greg's Miller. Greg Miller mm. alongside. Mm. He only does everything. Nope, that's not right. At the producer slash seducer. No, that the glue. No, cool. Gre no, it's Tim Geddes. What's up, Tim? Let's him host. How you doing? I'm doing okay. I had a scare this morning, Greg. I know you did. Uh, we were looking for venues for the kind of funny prom. Yeah. And uh, Joey and I were going to, to, we were Ubering to this venue to see whatever. They ended up canceling it, so we didn't even get to look at it. Um, the stairs were really nice outside, though. Uh, but while we So were, the stairs well, look good yeah, for this venue. Look, I mean, they look very prom-like. Like, okay. I can see you, a lot of the people lining up Kind of funny prom, of course, coming pictures. up June 30th. Get high. Um, uh, but I left my Switch. I had to bring my Switch today for some party modes. Yeah, and I left my switch in the Uber because I had one of those talky talky Uber drivers, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it distracted me. And I know a lot of Got people. Are like, How could you do that? Hey, I don't know, man. I fucked up. Yeah, I was in a moment of weakness. Yeah, uh, and it wasn't until like twenty minutes later that I'm drinking coffee with one Joey Noel. Yeah, that I realized I left it in the car. God, what a moment! Oh my god! And I freaked the fuck out. And I, and I panicked. I just looked through the app, called the guy, and uh, it, he was just like, "Dude, I'm in Berkeley. Like, I'm far." And I was like. Oh, and I was like, I'm never going to see it again. Yeah. I was so scared. Well, but he, my baby's back. Yeah, he had to bring it back. Did you have to pay no, for the ride or something? No, he doesn't have to bring it back. Oh. Yeah, I was looking into it. It's just like, hey, dude, it's on the driver's discretion. I could have not got it back for a month. Wow. At that point. Like, but he drove yeah. back without a fare? Just came back and gave it to I came back. You get There's like a $15 charge. And I tipped him a little bit. Thank you. Good job. Like, Good job. You're a respectful young yeah. gentleman. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he brought my baby back. Yeah. Do you think Nick with the in the morning show knew that it was our anniversary? No. That come up? Cool, Greg? No, they didn't check that either. It's funny. Cause we did kind of funny day, obviously, on Tuesday this year because then we, because usually what we do is we hold off streaming or doing any content until kind of funny day, but it would have been awkward to come back on a Friday. Yeah. Like we had a lot of cool shit planned for you. Get hype. All right, we're going away for a weekend. So we yeah. did it earlier this week. Of course, you know all about it because you went to patreon.com slash kind of funny games, saw the announcement of the new PlayStation VR show, saw that the kind of funny games cast game of the year with Andrea and. Andy Cortez is up right now on patreon.com slash kind of funny games. And of course there's an extra life documentary up and a whole bunch of new shows announced and things like that. The first new seasonal show for youtube.com slash kind of funny is up today too as well, making its debut MCU in review, mm -hmm. not games related though. So fuck it. We won't talk about it nope. here because this is kind of funny games daily each and every week down a variety of platforms. We run you through the nerdy video game news. You need to know about if you like that, you need to be part of the show. Write into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD to be part of it. So many of you did today, because let me tell you, whoo, industry is still on vacation. Yeah. Very quiet news day today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that makes sense. You can watch this recorded live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. If you do that, you have another job. You need to go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight. For everybody listening on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames later. What's that, Kevin? What? We're only 500 subs away now from 230,000 oh subs on youtube.com slash kind of funny games. So it seems like every day you listen to this, a hundred of you do what I ask, which is simple. Pull the fucking car over right now. We see the audio numbers. We know how many fucking people are downloading the podcast. Pull the car over, open the YouTube app on your phone, go in there, subscribe to youtube.com slash kind of funny games. If you have a Google account, you got it. Everybody has a Google account. And if you have one Google account, why not sign up for 10 more? Yeah. And then just sign and come in and sub with all those accounts. It's and simple. while you're doing that, if you like Marvel shows, hop on over to YouTube.com slash kind of funny. It's if you're on games, I mean, it's one click away. There's a blue one. You're right pink there. One. You're right there. It's all, you know, what do you got to do? You know, throw us a bone over here. Yeah. Get that 230 out so we can be like, look, we have 230. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. You, I, I felt like you were trying to interrupt me there when I was going. Did you have something to say in the beginning there when I was going through the rigmarole? Oh, before that, I mean, I just, I, I just wanted to go back to the Nintendo Switch Uber store. Oh, sure, yeah, please. I, didn't, I thought we were done. Like, like PlayStation, oh. you know, please change our names. But Nintendo, like, give us cloud saves, please. Yeah, didn't I? Wouldn't have brought that up. You have yeah. to wait for that online service at that. <sighs> oh, I know. And even that's like, well, then that get pushed back to fall, or was that a no. was that a real news no. story or a rumored news rumored story? story? Rumored news well, story. We'll see, man. Over break, January you know, I'm out 11th. there just living my life. I don't know. I'm not I expecting see. to hear about it January 11th. No, unless Smash is announced, which is I'm thinking unlikely at this point. But yeah. who the fuck am I? Yeah, who the fuck now, am I? Now, while we're here, just on this, before we get into the rope report and all mm -hmm. that, Jess. Yesterday, you told me. You had seen, we've been talking about the January 11th rumor for the Nintendo Direct for a while. Mm -hmm. You said that some person who is on the inside, yes. I, I vaguely quoted all this yesterday, but didn't get the specifics. What happened yesterday with this person? There's a whole bunch of different 
stuff going on. At this point, with the rumors with the Nintendo Direct, I don't want to attribute anything to any specific people because okay. it's all a mishmash of there's there's it's an one, orgy of ideas out there. Yes, yes. There's somebody that's been known to be a valid leaker. Somebody that has Pear gotten Schneider. a lot of things correct in the past. Uh, Me and that uh, that put out that leak about um, Josh the, Brolin. Ninja Turtles being the in the DLC for Injustice, mm-hmm. they got that right, and they made a bunch of other things talking about Devil May Cry and talking about um, Dragon Ball Fighters and talking about Marvel's Capcom Infinite. And some of these things have been happening. Some of them haven't. They said Devil May Cry Five would be at PSX, and it wasn't. Um, but a bunch of different things are changing in terms of the Nintendo Direct. There is a lot of stuff that at this point I can't tell what's real and what's not. But the rumors are that this Nintendo Direct is going to be E3 levels of huh. hype. And in the same way that we kind of saw last year's January announcement of the the Switch, kind of being like, "Hey, here's the for here's what you have to look forward to the first half, and a couple surprises or a couple things to look forward to in the fall, with, like Mario Odyssey." Yeah, we're gonna get that for 2018. And things being thrown around are actually the reveal of Metroid Prime Four being co-developed by uh, Bandai Namco, okay, or Namco Bandai, and uh, maybe you see some on some on Pokemon and an Animal Crossing announcement. I'm like, we're getting you're crazy. not getting an Animal Crossing announcement. If we get an Animal Crossing announcement, I'll take this mic stand and smash every panel on this wall. Why would you do that? Just because I, I, I don't know, man. It's like it's one of those things. Nintendo directs the cycle continues. People get way too hyped about. And they're going to be disappointed when it hits. But I mean, you know what? They haven't let me down so far when it comes to the directs and uh, delivering. So they haven't announced this thing yet, but they usually don't until a couple days before. I'm very excited about January 11th. I think it's going to be good, and I think we're going to get a lot of great news. You think Monday we hear about it? They say we're doing a direct. Probably. Yeah. All right. mm-hmm. Well, here we go. For now, let's finish off housekeeping with one more thing. I want to tell you, Kind of Funny Games Daily today is brought to you by the new Kind of Funny hoodie, but I'll tell you about our sponsor later on in the show. For now, let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. Do, 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 do. Time for some news. <laughs> All right, cool, Greg. You're putting your own spin on it. I see what's happening. Baker's Dozen. What? No, no, yeah, no. <laughs> Two items on the road for a fourth Baker's Dozen, says cool, Greg. First ones first. Burnout Paradise HD appears to be real, or remaster, whatever they're going to call it. This is via Gamatsu. Electronic Arts will release a Burnout Paradise HD remaster, title tentative, for PlayStation 4 in Japan on March 16th for 4,104 yen. The game is a high-definition remaster of the 2008 launched PS3, Xbox 360, and PC open world racer. In early December, rumors of the high-definition Burnout Paradise remaster for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One appeared on Brazilian blog Games Press, which cited listings for each version in a support supplier database. The release date was listed as March 1. That said, while only a PlayStation 4 version seems to be planned for Japan, physically at least, it will more, li- more than likely be released on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One mm-hmm. for the rest mm-hmm. of the world. Uh, Gamatsu is going off of a Twitter account that's in Japanese but had promo art and had all this different stuff. So, interesting. Smart. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, Burnout. Beloved franchise. Did you love Paradise? uh, Paradise, you know what? They all blend together for me where it's like, I loved the games, but like, I don't think I ever owned one. I think those were like, that was like a rental time. Gotcha, gotcha. So like, I I can't really tell the difference between them Yeah, when when this initially got rumored from Brazil, it was Gary, it was a Widow Wednesday and Gary and I talked about it. And I think he had more specific memories of Paradise. And so did I. Because Paradise is a game that, you know, 2008, it says, right? Right when I was at IGN. And so everyone was playing that. And it was... I'm not a racing guy, as you know. Like, that's not what I like to do. But the open worldness of it, okay. Oh, it's not about racing. Like, you can pull up to a stoplight and start a race if you want, or explore and smash billboards and find secrets. And then eventually they put in the DeLorean and the Ecto 1. And all, like, it was a game that was supported forever and ever and ever. So, yeah. the fact that they're talking about doing this remaster and actually dropping it, I assume, with all the DLC, it sounds super exciting, especially Definitely. for people who didn't, you know, get into it. Yeah. I, I don't remember if I if I play this one or not. Like that, knowing that time frame, I maybe I didn't play this because yeah. I, I don't think I had a PS3 until till later than that. So yeah, it's uh, when it got rumored, it was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. That's an interesting one, and there you go. I'm sure most people were just like a new burnout or a new burnout crash mode, but hey, burnout paradise HD is better than nothing. Number two on the Roper Report, the final Roper Report story. Really, dude, nothing is fucking happening this wow. week. We came back too early. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's top, P- but thank you all for writing into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. There's a ton of questions and good, good stuff. Okay, discussion good. points. Uh, top PSN downloads of 2017 have been announced via the PlayStation blog, of course. Uh, these go like this for the top 10, right? For PlayStation 4. Call of Duty World War 2, number one slot. 
Mm. Number two slot, Destiny 2. Mm-hmm. Number three spot, Friday the 13th, yeah. the game. Thank you for listening, what? everybody. Thank you for understanding the game's fun and great. How? That's why it's also the number three. Well, I shouldn't say that. Games cast. Yeah. Figure out where I put it on my list. How what? How how do you figure that happens? I mean, keep, uh, okay. Keep going with the list. I don't have this no, discussion. No, no, we can pop in right no, here. No, no, no. The I, I want, I want, I want, because I think that like looking at the rest of the list, just keep going. Keep going. Number four, Horizon Zero Dawn. Number five, Grand Theft Auto V, of course. Number six, NBA 2K18. Number seven, Rocket League. Number eight, Minecraft PlayStation 4 Edition. Number nine, Madden NFL 18. And number 10, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands. What do you got to say about all that? You're you look the at that, there's, there's an outlier, right? Like, you could argue there's two outliers, Rocket League and Friday the 13th. But Rocket League, there's Legacy, there's the whole... You know, PS Plus thing kind of giving it its first boost. So sure. it's kind of associated with PlayStation in a lot of ways. And I think that when people are like on, like it's heavily promoted on PSN constantly. And like yeah. Rocket League is, Rocket is Rocket there. League. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, something people know to buy. Uh, Friday the 13th, especially being that high, I'm very surprised. But so what's your reasoning? The reasoning behind is lest we forget, it was only, di- it was available digitally only for a while. It wasn't until October's Friday the 13th, right? Yeah, October 13th that they actually put out a disc version of Friday the 13th. Before then, you could only get it if you downloaded it. That makes sense, but still, I mean, that's more than these, more than NBA 2K18. But I, I, this goes back to what we always talk about. We talk about like the digital revolution, and I love downloading games, and I don't like buying. I rarely, if ever, buy a hard copy of a game. We're still the minority. People want to buy. Like I think for a lot of people, if if it's going to be a triple a game they want to have it on their shelf they want to have it right there if there's an option of digital or they have the box copy to have on display and be happy and like continue their playstation 4 collection that's how a lot of people still want their stuff yeah so and it i does, get that I, I i don't get me wrong if you would have asked me last night where is it going to download or where would it have ranked in the psn downloads before i saw the list i don't know what i would well, have I mean, said would you, if i asked you greg greg miller yeah the date is january 4th 27, 18. Yeah. Damn it. It's rough. I know. God, I, know. I wanted to nail that. It's okay. I was thinking about it. Even We're coming out of vacation still. I got this weird January beard. 4th, 2018. I'm like, Greg Miller. Yeah. Is Friday the 13th going to be in the top 10 PSN downloads of yeah. 2017? I would say, yeah, but I would have put it higher. I would have put it up in like, you know, the 10, nine spot. Man. Just because I mean, I would have lost a pizza bet on that one. Yeah. But yeah, I understand why you wouldn't believe it, but it is the fact of just you're right when you look at this right like the what are the outliers of things that we you know that aren't giant triple and not even i don't want to say that but like minecraft's been around forever grand theft auto's been around forever rocket league's been around forever but we know those games continue to sell non-stop but yeah friday the 13th I, I think it was a giant movement for a while there like a lot of people jumped on in the beginning and like you know i mean i guess that's my thing is like i just don't see friday the 13th as a giant movement i see it as something that i mean like, like i let my playstation or i was a i brought in we're switching out of xboxes at the office so i brought in my xbox one s right and was installing stuff and updating stuff over and I had it run at my desk and sure enough i you know you know how it goes to sleep for a second but it brings up that sidebar to see what else is happening it's like oh your friend jack drat you know jack DeVries is streaming right now and he's streaming friday the 13th hmm. like that's what's happening. I, you know, I still man, want to play Friday the 13th whenever I get the Good for them, man. Yeah. Like, I, I think it's very inspiring that a small team would make a game. Granted, lots of bugs and, and sure. mistakes, but hey, that shit happens. But like, congrats. They did it. You know, they made they made a thing. And I wonder if maybe it retains this and keeps going. And if they keep adding stuff and, and keep pushing, maybe it could be like Rocket League and show up later. Yeah, I don't know. The Maybe uh, there'll be a Friday the 14th. No, oh, I see what you did there. That was an interesting one. By the way, Saturday the 14th. Kevin's trying to repair equipment. Cool Greg's trying to make sure things run in a different setup. I'm supposed to be doing time codes. I totally yes. fucking forgot yes, on the stories. So we're saying three minutes-ish for Ro- Roper Report starting. Five minutes-ish for the top PSN starting. Got two, two, two. You got 222? Two, 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 two. Okay, that counts, yeah. Okay. I never understand why Kevin does housekeeping. Because it's just that's part of the... It's Original the first part of the show. Yeah. See, Eight whatever. minutes for the first story. Huh? Eight minutes for the first story. Eight minutes for the first story. We had we talked a lot about the direct and all this stuff. Okay, okay. Just, I'm just throwing it out there, guys. I'm trying my hardest over here. And Kevin's not here. Nobody knows what's happening. And I, I can't live without Kevin. Because looking at the rest of this list, it's I totally buy all of it. Even the order. Yeah. Yeah. You just don't trust in the belief of how big Friday 13th is. You thought I, I was it. making a big deal out of a nothing. Mm-hmm. When in fact, it is a big something. Mm-hmm. So you can go to hell. Mm-hmm. Uh, over on the PSVR top downloads, it goes like this. Job Simulator, 
Super Hot VR, PlayStation VR Worlds, I Expect You to Die, Batman Arkham VR, The Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim VR, Fruit Ninja VR, Keep Talking and no one ex- Nobody Explodes, Until Dawn, Rush of Blood, and Drive Club VR. As somebody who's launching a show called The PlayStation VR Show in February of this year, I'm disappointed in the list. I, I, a lot of them are launch titles still. And I don't, and I'm, let me say that, and let me give you more feedback there. I'm disappointed in the fact that it's still launch titles. I'm not disappointed in the people. I'm not disappointed in devs. I, I think, as I've said before, the whole reason I'm doing this PlayStation VR show uh, in February, eight episodes, blah, 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 is the fact that I got so excited about what I saw at PSX and the fact that PlayStation VR isn't dead and they have a lot of cool stuff coming and uh, Firewall is awesome and Moss is awesome and I, yeah, Accounting Plus is great and that just came out at the end of the year. Like, There's a lot of cool stuff happening, but it's kind of disappointing to look here and be like, all oh, right. The stuff that's still getting downloaded is the stuff that came out right at the gate. Like, I feel yeah. like we could, I could speak to most of these games, right? Because I played them all when it initially dropped. Yeah, but I mean, doesn't that make sense though? Because I mean, yeah, it came hope- out at the end of the year. Sure. So it's like all the people buying, all the people that got it at Christmas were then buying games and they're going to buy the ones that people are talking about. And when sure. you look at this list, it kind of is a look at the review scores of going to IGN right, by right, right, ranking right, right. of review score and go sure. down. Uh, and yeah, there also hasn't been too much. And I guess it doesn't count things like Resident Evil and all that. Right, because that's not a pure VR game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting, though. Mm-hmm. I think next year the list will actually, hopefully, knock on wood, next year the list is actually sh- sh- shaken up. Because I feel like, kind of funny.com slash you're wrong, that they put out the, you know, the top downloads of 2016. And I bet it looked a lot like this. Oh, too. definitely. Yeah. yeah but I, but I, would, I would argue, I don't know. Are they, were they, yeah, they were talking about top downloads for VRs. So they must have done it. Anyways, Elder Scrolls. Skyrim there. Yeah, people love it. Grimecraft falling asleep in it, waking up in it. He's a weirdo. <laughs> you see that tweet? No. He was playing Elder Scrolls Skyrims and fell, fell asleep in it and then woke up and he woke up in uh, what's the world? Drugs are a crazy thing. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, not our Kevin, but a different Kevin, writes into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, I was driving the 45 minutes to work listening to Kind of Funny Games Daily on Friday morning, and Greg said Kind of Funny nearly has 20, 230,000 subs on YouTube, and everyone listening should stop their cars on the freeway so they can subscribe. I followed his advice, slammed on the brakes, and immediately caused a multi-car pileup. Luckily, nobody was injured, but when the police showed up and the officer asked me why I had stopped, after telling him, he turned and he said, you shouldn't take what Greg said literally as he caused a major accident. But if I wanted to know where to go for the coming soon games from the digital mom and grop shops, where should I go? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform is listed by the kind of funny games daily show host each and every weekday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. These stories. Always my favorite part. Yeah, of the show. you like that one? I haven't done one on this show in a long time. Uh, out today, I, I re- initially wrote fucking nothing because there was nothing out today. But an IGN has this story I, I grabbed a paragraph of. NBA Playgrounds has relaunched on Nintendo Switch as a nine ninety nine enhanced edition. Uh, this new version replaces the original May release, and it finally brings challenge mode, the game's online mode, which has been available on PlayStation Four, Xbox One, and PC all this time to Switch. Ooh. You remember this? Where this yeah. game came out, and it was totally. A kneecap version. Everybody's like, what the hell is this? Why'd I buy this? They fixed it, apparently. New dates for you. The Devil J-Ho is the first piece of free Monster Hunter World DLC. It drops on January 26th with the game, of course. Splatoon 2, Neon Pink, and Neon Green Joy-Cons will be coming to the U.S. this month later. That's all I say. Finally. And then Mutant Football League comes to Xbox One and PlayStation 4 on January 19th. Damn it, Cool Greg. Were you taking time codes on any of that? Yeah. Thanks. I'm just letting you do it here from, cool Gre- from here on out, Cool Greg. Okay. Um, now it's time for Reader Mail. But first, I need to tell you that Reader Mail is brought to you by kindoffunny.com slash store, where we have a new hoodie up. Mm-hmm. It's black. It's got the smiley, smiley, blue ice or is it white? Oh, it's blue smiley. It's a blue smiley on a black hoodie. You can pre-order now. It'll get to you in February. We love it. I can't wait to wear that hoodie. It's fantastic. My blue Selling hoodie, well. ragged. People are loving it. There's yeah. going to be an army out there. Good. That's what I want to see. People in sexy ass hoodies. Yeah. And then they, and how many they carry get laid Wearing that hoodie. Everybody kind of funny prom. Hell yeah. Dude. Yeah. That's my Hell man. Yeah. Reader mail. We're going to start with John Fick. John Fick. A co- oh, no. What? Good morning, KFGD. There's been a lot of talk about Nintendo sustaining success with the Switch after both Mario and Zelda launching in year one. While I agree it's a good conversation to have, you guys are seriously sleep. I'm sorry. While I agree it's a good conversation to have, you guys are seriously sleeping on Pokemon. You guys are seriously sleeping on Pokemon. 
It gets mentioned passively as if it won't be the tentpole system seller. If you look at the top 25 best-selling Nintendo titles in history, Pokemon is on that list seven times. Zelda? Not once. Pokemon has an insanely large audience and is a huge factor behind the success of Nintendo's handhelds. There are millions of Pokemon fans, and I'm going to call them Pokemaniacs, there that will buy a Switch because they know it's the new platform to get their Pokemon fix. John Fick. This is one of the the hills that I'll die on. Oh, here we go. Where between me and Andrea Renee, sure. this is one of our fights. This is one of our arguments that we, we get into. But you love each show. other. We love each other. But we had the debate on kind of funny games daily between Zelda and Pokemon. And we got into the weeds. We started getting into a whole bunch of shit because I said that there's been more Zelda games than Pokemon. There's a lot of weird technicalities and whatever that turned into a separate fight sure. that, that wasn't necessary. The bottom line is Pokemon wins. Pokemon sells way more. Zelda, not the system seller. Never has been. Yeah. Zelda, great game. Hardcore people love it. And it does sell well. I was surprised that then the, the stats they put out yesterday that we talked about in Kind of Funny Games Daily, right? Of like, it's the fastest, Switch is the fastest selling console in American mm-hmm. history. But the attach rate now for Zelda is 55. Yeah. Where feel, and like Zelda, or I'm sorry, Mario 60, where yeah. it's like, oh man, but Zelda, I, at launch, the attach rate was way better. But that's, now that people are coming in, they're like, oh, I'm not a Zelda person. I'm going to buy something else. Yep. And that's history. Tells itself. And yeah. again, we t- I talked about this with Andrea many times, but uh, you know what sells better than 3D Mario games? 2D Mario 2D games. Mario games. It's going to happen. We're going to yeah. get a 2D Mario game and it's going to outsell Odyssey. And uh, with Pokemon, they're going to, whatever they end up doing, it's going to sell ridiculously well. Uh, Pokemon is in a very interesting place right now. I am Japan extremely excited uh, for whatever comes of the next one on, on the Switch. I'm also very worried, but. The more I think about it, I start to realize that I don't need to be worried because there's, if they don't nail it, if they don't give me what I want the first time, they probably will the second. I have, a lot of the leaks about the directs have implied that there's a lot of pressure on Game Freak uh, from Nintendo to get a Pokemon game out in 2018. Okay. Now, the fact that we got Ultra Sun and Moon. Do you think that's going to happen, though? So, I think it's possible. The fact that we got Ultra Sun and Moon uh, in 2017, a year after we got Sun and Moon. They could rush the Gen 8, I think it's Gen 8, and uh, get it going, and it would just kind of be a similar similar style thing in the same way that they had the 3DS games where X and Y were similar to Sun and Moon. Anyone expecting a Breath of the Wild style change for Pokemon would not get in that mm. as the first step, and, and that sucks. I, I do want something like that, but at the same time, when Pokemon sells as well as it does, you can't change it too much. You don't want to screw that up. Yeah, there's certain core things about it that you just got to keep the same. And I think that, at least for the first one, what uh, my boy John Fix here is saying, I think that what that's what Game Freak is going to do. They're going to come out, put out the kind of what people expect from Pokemon, get all the Pokemon 3DS owners to jump to Switch, yeah. and then maybe the next gen, they'll kind of boost it up a bit. I think we, we saw it on the DS with the difference between... Um, wow. Aloha squad. Diamond and Diamond and Pearl going into black and white. Like black and white was a substantial jump up from the other two. So I don't know. We'll we'll see how they all how it all shakes out with this. But I mean, I th- there's multiple fights within the Pokemon fandoms and the Switch fandoms of what's gonna happen. Because there's the Pokemon faithful, the Pokemon fans that have been with it from the beginning, and then there's the people that aren't Pokemon fans that are just like, I just want red and blue. I just give me red and blue too. Give me the just 150, fuck all this. But it's like why would they cater to those people when there are so many people, millions and millions and millions, buying what they're doing, which is just add 100 more monsters, add a new yeah, yeah. region, go from there. I fall into a weird mix of the two where there's nothing I want more than a red and blue two, but I'm part of the problem, and I understand that. Uh, will that be what we get as this first one? Possibly, because that is kind of a weird uh, half step where it's like, let's go back to Kanto. Let's just up res, give them an HD sun and moon style like it's fairly limited but it's on the switch people will jump on on that the nostalgia alone will push people to be like it's fucking red and blue yeah yeah i mean, I'd do it i mean and then I, down the line, whatever the next pokemon, pokemon is on uh switch i'm gonna play yeah like i'm all in on my switch i love my switch and i you know i played silver right or that's where or, or soul silver yeah. yeah yeah and like i fell off somewhere in world two or three or whatever, mm-hmm. or map two or three. Yeah. And it was like, it was fun. It was fine. But like the zeitgeist of everyone playing that, if that's what it's like here, where Dude, we're all just fucking around. I mean, yeah. You're going to get sucked in. The, the problem in this, what I'm talking about, it's like, well, this is a weird timing thing where 
I'm sure they're feeling the pressure. They do need to get it out sooner than later. Uh, but I think that that might cause the people like you to play a Pokemon game and be like, meh. When, if it was that second one. I sure, think if it, it was been, the, the jump. Different. But I don't know. Who knows? It's so totally now, unpredictable. Do you agree with John that we're, that we're seriously sleeping on it? I, I feel like. Well, I think it's people like Andrew. It's be, like, I think he's talking. He's not talking about me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, I mean no one's going to argue that I'm not talking about Pokemon enough. If, he, if this is based on recent episodes, I feel it's because. We're talking about what's going to happen in this the new year. What's going to happen in 2018? And I don't think we're going to get a Pokemon in 2018. Dude, I mean, here's the thing. It's crazy to think that we are. Yeah. But with all... Crazier things have happened with the Switch. Sure. The, yeah, definitely. And with all of the, the talk about Pokemon that's going on, like, I don't think it's crazy to think that we're getting a Pokemon in 2018. It's not confirmed. But yeah, yeah, yeah. This Direct, man. Like, if this Direct is what they're saying, Animal Crossing, Metroid, Pokemon, in addition to other stuff... Pfft, the room, Bayonetta 3 in summer. Yeah. All right. Strap in, everybody. Next week, we'll know. Uh, Phil writes in, sticks on this Nintendo Direct path, and says, Hey, Greg and Tim, given that we're almost definitely getting a Nintendo Direct next week, I wanted to throw out a worry about Project Octopath Traveler's prospects, which I assume we'll get some details on. I know Tim is hoping this is a Final Fantasy game, but I'm going to assume the reason Square Enix has been cagey with the name is that it is actually a saga game, but he, it's capital S, capital G. Is that my saying that right? Is that still saga? Saga. Uh, multiple protagonists with crisscrossing paths in a hall, is a hallmark for that series, but the name is as good as mud with American gamers. The saga games have got have gotten the the saga games we have gotten in the past were underwhelming to say the least. Does the legacy of saga series have you all worried here, or are we looking at another near automata situation where the subpar series in question just needs to be ignored? Thanks and keep up the great work. I don't know anything about the saga. Stuff. Ed, there's, I don't think there's any chance it ends up being a saga game. Okay. I, I, I also don't think there's a real chance of it being a Final Fantasy game. That's just more of a Tim get hype moment thing. Um, but I have a feeling this game is going to end up being called something stupid. Yeah, like, like at this point, just keep project I mean, project Apto, Octopath Traveler. We all know what being, that means. We all like that. that game. We're all fine with it. Just let yeah. it go. Yeah, and uh, I, I expect we'll see it at the direct, and I expect that we'll get, get a, a uh, if not a, a date, a month, uh, and I expect it to be first half, like pretty early March, maybe April. I feel maybe like we, February even. I feel like we keep having this conversation. I apologize. Mm -hmm. When is Owlboy Switch coming out? It's this month? January. End of month? End of month. Okay. Yeah, 26 or something like that, right? Something like that. Kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. I know mm -hmm. it's in that back half of January. That's, that's I think, the next game I'm, I'm get ready to get hyped more for. I'm stoked for that. Yeah. 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 Oh, let's check out what else. Dean Miller, no relation, writes into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, Hello, Greg, and other co hosts who I can't remember while I, who will be sharing this episode. With Disney's purchase of Fox and the likely event that X Men, Deadpool, and Fantastic Four will join the MCU, what should we ex expect from the upcoming Square Enix Marvel games? Will we see these new additions shoehorned in or even get their own titles potentially? We'd love to know your thoughts. Thanks, Dean. They're not getting shoehorned into Avengers. Uh, I, I don't think they'll be shoehorned in, mentioned. Yeah. Maybe even part of it somehow. Sure. I think that now that that's happened, that's awesome. And you don't see a video game repercussion for quite a while. I mean, the, the thing is, the video game repercussions, it starts getting really loose really quick. Mm -hmm. Like, they had the rights to the video games. Sure. They didn't earn them from this. So... If they were part of it, sure. But but, but, but we've but, seen but. things like the Fantastic Four and X Men comics being toned down. Exactly. Of we canceled the Fantastic Four. We've seen thing. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite not having any X Men. Like yeah. yes, we've we've seen things like that. Uh, having said that, I think that we'll start seeing. Like I think Marvel vs. Capcom. Guess what? We're gonna get some X Men. X Men DLC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so what that means for this Avengers game that we don't understand where it's at in production? I don't know. I feel like they're so deep in production for that right they're out of pre-production they've got to be working they have a, I have a deadline and milestone and all these different things i think about i think they have a story they have their characters everything's in and, it, and it's like oh that's great that the x-men and fantastic four are here but you don't want to just give them a oh hey wolverine popped up to give me this mission and we've never mentioned mutants or anything in any of our narrative before any of the written you know in-game items you find or anything like that. yeah i don't know i mean i would not be surprised if there, if Kevin Feige or whoever has had two versions of, hey, the, the Fox deal didn't just happen. Sure. So it's like, it's the, hey, if this happens and if this doesn't happen, here's the plan. And I wouldn't be surprised if people at Square, like the story development people, were looped into two things. I don't know, man. See, I totally agree with you. Yeah, yeah Kevin at MCU totally has two things. 
I don't think it's too crazy to believe that in fucking Infinity War, whether we get a glance into a universe or whatever, the, however the fuck mm-hmm. they're going to do all this, that they've had a plan of how they want to do this, and you're going to see something that they're adding in at the last minute here to be like, that's fucking amazing. That's mm-hmm. awesome. But uh, the games the games just take so long to lay that track and get that foundation and go from there. But uh, again, I don't expect Wolverine to be a playable character. Mm-hmm. I think that there's a chance that there is there is some mission that has to do with mutants. There's some... Uh, not even mission. Like there, there'll be more than just a, like Easter egg. There'll be something where it's like mutants are in this world. Mm. Like it's because that's the world that they're in. Eventually, I don't know. It, who knows See, if the, this game comes out? Who knows what? It, and it's the fact that the games on. are keeping their own universes that aren't crossing over. I think I would say don't even no don't don't do the mutant stuff. Don't hint at anything. Blah blah blah. blah. Don't put the Baxter building in there. Tell your story that you already have been telling, and then we get a bigger pop when we do at E three twenty twenty come get out and, and show an X Men game. I mean, yeah, you know what? I'm getting really ahead of myself. That you're right. Like that makes sense. It is just an Avengers game. It's not a Marvel game. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, keep it Avengers. <laughs> I take back everything I just said. I'm an idiot. My dog Nick ninety six from Massachusetts. Thank you. I don't want to confuse you with the other my dog Nick ninety six from Canada. Says hello, Greg and Tim. Back at PSX, Greg and Andy got to see a behind closed doors demo of Dreams. As someone who enjoyed creating music and stuff in Little Big Planet One and Two, I am very interested in Media Molecule's next game. Greg and Andy's impression on Gamescast left me ecstatic, and I can't wait for Dreams. This may be too early to ask, but do you possibly see Dreams set at an irregular price point? I feel there could be an argument to make it forty dollar, make it a forty dollar title, or even an eighty dollar title. People would opt more to pick it up at 40 plus i've heard the campaign is not that long based on the tools and freedom you're given i could see this being worth 80 dollars. if you also consider how much time and development media molecules put into this project it's hard to say this is probably more of a think piece because it's likely going to be 60 dollars. but thanks for listening anyway my dog nicks 96 interesting uh, 80 dollars not a chance in hell kotaku uh, i saw put up a article yesterday that was based on a podcast that they did um, that was Jason Schreier and Kirk, I want to say. Okay. Is it Kirk at Kotaku? You know what I'm talking about? I don't know. Right. I know One Jason Schreier at Kotaku. Um, and they did a predictions for 2018 in video games. And yeah. Like they each made a bunch of predictions. I kind of want to, on Gamescast, go through their predictions and kind oh, cool. of... Talk about their predictions. Talk about the predictions. Sure. One of the predictions uh, that I think I think his name's Kirk made was uh, that in 2018... There will be multiple. Uh, someone will try to sell a game for more than fifty dollars or sixty dollars, mm, like a retail so, on shelf yeah. game. So I thought that was interesting. Just want to bring that up. Now. Sure. In terms of this, yeah, dreams for eighty. No, <laughs> no, no. Dreams for forty. Dreams for forty is a really interesting proposition. Yeah. Hey, we have a shorter campaign, but you have these amazing creation tools. Even if you don't want to create, people will be creating amazing things in this for you to play. We want to get you in. We want to go. We want to have you in. like. Stick with me. Because it's not going to happen. It, it's not going to happen, Tim. My dog, Nick96, it is not going to happen. But what if it was a PlayStation Plus game day and date? Yep, that's interesting. Hey, like, let's get everyone in there to see this crazy fucking game we've made that is awesome, mm-hmm. but you don't understand and has been talked about forever and talked to death. Let's get you in there and get everyone creating. Let's, eat, let's I don't even know. Give They don't do demos anymore, right? But let, let's give everybody the demo of mm-hmm. Dreams and get you in there ready to go. So business wise, sure. Lay the business on me. There's the the, the idea of would you if you sell it for forty, more people will buy it. Right. If you sell it for sixty, less people can buy it, and theoretically, if the numbers add up, you can make more money. Right. Yeah. So you need to kind of figure out what that balance is of what's the right thing to push out for a game like dreams you want to get it in the hands of more people because the more people talk about it the more people using it the more people creating the more right. people whatever so the idea of you bringing a ps plus that is it's brilliant for this because that is built-in marketing give it free for a month to people get them all active and using it and then go from there now the problem is i just don't know how you monetize that and i don't know if you then introduce if i'm sure they're i don't mean that little big planet had a million costumes in it so they microtransactioned yep. that and it, before it was a bad word like, I don't know how, if that's the the method then to get people to stick around that you're gonna, then going to do all these different things for your uh, teardrop character whose name I forget. Kind of funny that comp slash you're wrong. Mm. There's something there because mm-hmm. it is this is an uphill climb right now for them of I think every journalist person who came out of the dreams demo is like, holy shit, this is fucking awesome. But how do you spread that message to everyone? Because this isn't a PSVR situation where we put it on. We took it off. Shuhei saying. It's going to take a long time to get somewhere awesome. It's tech. You're all building this with us. That's great for the small PlayStation faithful, the people who want to be on that kind of and thing. For tech. 
Right. For a video game like this, you want to get people into it and engage and you want it to be mainstream and you want, you know, we used to always talk about this on Beyond and PS I Love You, right? The fact that Little Big Planet was successful as a game, but even more so as Sackboy, where Sackboy was on Toys R Us shelves as a doll and kids had Sackboy backpacks and they may not have been the biggest Little Big Planet players and creators and it ne- it n- never touched like as many kids as I see in like the Creeper sweatshirt, right, for Minecraft, but there was this thing that broke oh, through the Crash Bandicoot jorts. Oh God. I see a lot of kids in the Crash Bandicoot jorts. They're mm-hmm. big fans of that these days. It never broke through to the mainstream or I, mean, I did break through to the mainstream in a way that lots of video games don't. And I, in dreams is even harder to do that because it is your imp character or whatever. And like, yeah. how do you, and, and dreams is a game that you and Andy came back and you both were like, Holy crap. And yeah. you still didn't convince me. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah exactly. Granted, I'm not going to be the type of person that is like ready to be convinced on this, but I, I Dreams is there's an uphill battle ahead of Media Molecule and yeah. uh, ahead of Sony to figure out. So I don't. Yeah, I think I think a lower price point. I hadn't thought about it, when dog Nick. I think it makes a lot of sense. I do think that a forty dollar in the same range as that Ratchet and Clank makes sense. But there's something about that though where you're assigning a value to it. We, I know. So Sadly. saying it's forty dollars is saying that it's not worth sixty. You know, yeah. that's telling people something. And with something like Dreams. But that's the problem. With you don't want to think of Dreams as a budget game. I know, but that's the problem. And this is back to the Ratchet and Clank argument of Ratchet and Clank was not a budget Ratchet and Clank. But when it initially got announced at 40 bucks, we were all like, oh, yeah, it's a movie tie and this yep. isn't going to be great. And it was great mm-hmm. until people start getting brave and exploring that scale. Every game that does say to itself, hey, we're pro consumer. We know we're a weird idea. We want to do this. Let's get out at forty dollars. Gets looked down upon, yeah. and even like Lawbreakers trying to do it right, like it, in being very upfront about, like, hey, we're not, you know, we think of ourselves as a AAA game, but we're not. We're a double A studio. We're a multiplayer only game. Yep. I don't know, especially, in the, but it is an interesting thing that you could see the pendulum go either way. I'm, I at no point are they going to charge eighty bucks for this. Are they going to go more than sixty dollars on a game that is so hard to sell to people? It's so hard to express to people why this is awesome, and so hard to convince someone like yourself that loves platforming and loves video games, but you don't want to create stuff, but you don't have to create but devil's advocate, like charging $80 for it, but really making it this like niche premium thing of just like, look at all the software you get, whatever pitching it more of like a guitar hero situation where it's like, you're thinking of it as peripherals where instead of getting physical peripherals, yeah. it's more, Hey, there is a, like all the sh- stuff that Andy was talking about, all yeah, that, yeah, yeah. the MIDI support and like, Making being able to make music that's not just Sackboy jumping on piano keys, but like yeah, yeah. real legit, like, hey, this could be an entry into if you're uh, a high school kid that wants to dabble in audio production or video production or level creation or game design or all that stuff. Because yeah, I mean, I remember being one of those guys where I was like, this is fucking cool. Like Mario Paint alone, I was like, mm-hmm. it made me obsessed with creation and all that type of stuff so if you marketed it that way i think that could be interesting but it goes back to what i was saying about the business of like all right but then there's less people playing playing it yeah and that's that's not what they want and exactly i feel like that would be cool in one way but it would it would totally stop people from playing it because it would be overload it would be like there'd be no chance of you playing that game Mm -hmm. whereas if they can sell it as it's a cool game with this cool levels to play with and there'll be infinite levels and there'll be infinite games to play in it that's easier i think they have to actually shy away from stressing the creation because the creators the people who are crazy about media molecule and have never given up on little big planet or creating or any or even dreams like the the audience that's there they're going to get there and make amazing things regardless and i think it's going to be you know, I can't even imagine what I'd ever want to create because it's literally a blank slate and I'm not a video game guy right, or a video game creator. But I feel like when I'm playing a level, when I'm playing somebody else's level, when I see what they did something cool, I'm like, oh, like, well, that, what if I just did tinker? What if I tried to make a cut scene and that's all it was? You know, what if I went in and just tried to make the best kind of funny logo, which, of course, everyone out there will outclass me at immediately. But you know what I mean? Like, it's baby steps, I think, to get people in. And that's where I think the $40 price point works better. If not, even lower than that. But then you get into crazy town. Yeah. If this thing came out at 20 bucks, which would be fucking insane. And what a great deal. And then it comes back to, though, like, what for PlayStation, what is the business goal of dreams? Mm -hmm. Obviously to make money, but is it to make all the money up front or have this dedicated community and have all these people in there making cool things and have it talked about as this, hey, PlayStation's got everything this year. They've got Spider-Man, yeah. this big budget thing. They've got God of War, which is gruesome. They've got this you know, art studio that they're basically giving away. 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the interesting factor that we don't know. Yeah. You should call your boy Sean Layden and ask him. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Let's see who else wrote in. Bipartisan Gamer wrote in. The kind of funny. Dot com slash KFGD and says, hello, Greg and Tim. Greg, yesterday you and Andrea mentioned your worry that Sea of Thieves would fail on release due to the importance of team communication in the game. It got me thinking. What if on its release, Xbox made it a games with gold game? In the way, in this way, many... No, okay, it's not me. In this way, many who players who would not have bought the game would, and if they love the game, word of mouth could inspire those who wouldn't normally buy it to opt in. I know the budget between Sea of Thieves and Rocket League are different, but being released as a PlayStation Plus game undoubtedly helped Rocket League become the juggernaut it is today. So, do you see Thie of Th- Sea of Thieves or any other games being released as PlayStation? This is funny. I read the Sea of Thieves thing. I didn't get into the ways I was Sea of Thieves is another one that could actually really benefit from this. But the problem is I just don't understand the business side. I didn't go to business school. The benefits of first party PlayStation owned and operated games. IP games being put out for free, right? Rocket League works because Psyonix gets a check from PlayStation at a flat rate of like, cool, for a, however many of this gets downloaded, this is what we get. And obviously, worked out incredibly well for them. Yeah, it's marketing. It's promotion. Yeah. Sea of Thieves would be another good sea one. Sea of Thieves and Dreams, man. We'll see if I'm wrong about them. Which one do you think will be more successful? Oh, man. And how do you define success, I guess? Yeah, the that's, that's the bigger problem. We need to know what both people yeah, are yeah, for. Yeah. I mean, I feel like Sea of Thieves is a bit easier. It's like that game is trying to sell. That game is, that is the goal of it, yeah. right? Um, I feel like, and I don't know if this is success, but I feel like Dreams will be a thing longer than Sea of Thieves will be a thing, if that makes sense. But again, now we're talking about hardcore communities and who the fuck knows, because maybe there's a bunch of pirates out there for Sea of Thieves that just never leave. Sea of Thieves seems to be the, have a, a similar um, thing going for it that Until Dawn did, where I think it's going to be a big stream game. It's going to be big on in that type mm, of community okay. where there's a lot of people watching people play. There's a lot of people teaming up together, like Twitch streamers together, playing together and and doing that stuff and role playing and all, That's all of that. Um, so, but the difference is Until Dawn is a finite experience, sure. whereas Sea of Thieves is like, hey, do whatever the fuck you want to do. Yeah, be a pirate. People like pirates. People do love pirates. Um, I feel like everyone around us is way more excited for Sea of Thieves than I am. Uh, we had a great time that one time at E3 playing, but that was I in feel a like, perfect scenario. I mean, I, I don't know who you're referencing being more excited. I feel like what you're saying. Everyone at IGN. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I remember when everyone at IGN, myself included, was like, man, Evolve's a lot of fun. Like, that'll be the same thing here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's I, I don't see it happening, but we're in a different place now where communities like this exist because like what i was saying with twitch and all that yeah i don't know (laughs) but even like what you're saying is interesting uh of like okay cool what if we were doing a twitch stream and everybody was doing it it's also cumbersome right in the Mm -hmm. way that there's different i know there's different websites you can go to to link up twitch streams and show them all together but the best way to do it be have people being intercut but that's that hard to do for your regular twitch stream or most successful twitch streamers right or just in their house on green screen and that's why when they showed the trailers at e3 it is intercut let's play yeah. is showing off that and when we did our our demo at e3 it was and this was two years ago i think now um they had us all go there and they were like telling us what to do and like they were playing as captains and stuff and it felt like one of those corny E3 yeah, demos yeah, yeah. but it was fun because we were actually doing it and it was yeah. like oh shit it's actually like that but the more we walk away it's like it'll never be actually like that yeah kind of like Wildlands uh, yeah where you and me you and you, you, me went and played Wildlands and had a great red leader and we're like I can't wait to play this and then we got it and we we, we played a little bit of it and it was like, we're, right, we're yeah. still jackasses yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's not what it, it felt like there but yeah with Sea of Thieves I don't know let, let me know kind of funny.com slash you're wrong am I an asshole who's the only person who wrote in about Sea of Thieves so again I'm not, we're not at all at agents of mayhem hype, but I'm just saying not, you know, I don't know. I would love to know right in for Monday show. You're back on Monday. Yeah. Heads up. That's where we're announcing is the, he's, he's hosting on Monday with me. So we'll talk about Sea of Thieves there. I want to know if you guys are hyped for it. If you're not, why or why not? Kind of funny.com well, slash like KFGD. You know I mean? <laughs> like snoring. There you go. Somebody, if they, it's a boring ah. game, there you go. IGN. We just gave you a strap line. Enjoy it, Marty. Time to squat up. This is where one of you writes in. To kindoffunny.com slash KFGD, giving me your name, username, platform of choice, and why you need help in a video game. I read it here. The best friends come and find you. Y'all play games together this very weekend. Simon Tucker wrote in, and 
He needs help on PlayStation VR Rec Room specifically. His PSN, Nerdy Dude One Two Two Four. No weird spellings. I appreciate that, Simon. Nerdy Dude. One, two, two, four writes in and says, I recently picked up a PSVR and fell in love with an awesome game called Rec Room. It's a free to play social experience where you can play pinball, complete quests, and really do whatever you want with friends in VR. It's got a whole bunch of other like bar games. I want to say it's got air hockey in it, maybe pool, maybe bowling, but stuff like that. Like stuff you'd play in a Rec Room. The issue is I don't have any friends in VR. I'd love the chance to hang out with any of the folks from the kind of funny community, especially in the lead up. To the PlayStation VR show. Oh, and I also play Rocket League and Spelunky for any non PS VR best friends. So if you want to play Rec Room or Spelunky scores, and it's not multiplayer, right? Rocket League, you can hit up Nerdy Dude 1224 on that there PSN and get ready for the PlayStation VR show. Tim? Yes. We ask people watching live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games to go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screwed up as we screw it up. What do we get wrong today? Big Daddy Wolf. Big Daddy Wolf. Greg asked yesterday the difference between PUBG and GTA 5 Motor Wars, and Andrea never read any answers. So even though you parachute from an airplane and stay inside a shrinking circle, there are only 20 players and a heavy focus on weaponized vehicles. Thank you. Charles J says, not a correction, but I consider an interesting addition. Okay. Top downloads for Europe. Significantly different and seems to indicate Europe saved the bandicoot. I'm clicking on it. This comes from the European Top PlayStation blog. PSN downloads. Oh, top down. Number one, FIFA 2018. Number two, Call of Duty World War II. Number three, Rocket League. Number four, GTA 5. Number five, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. Nice job. Which, yeah, wow, I wasn't on the list. That's weird. I didn't know the Europeans were so far ahead of us on downloads and that they also like to just have everything digitally and not have a lot of space. Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Coelho is back. Don't joke about breaking my wall. Don't joke about breaking my wall. Horizon Zero Dawn. Seven. Ark Survival Evolved. Eight, FIFA 2017. Okay. Damn, FIFA on the list twice. People love FIFA. Nine, EA Sports UFC 2 and 10, Rainbow Six Siege. Why are you... Now I have a... Somebody write in to kindoffunny.com slash KFG and tell me why you're all a bunch of monsters who didn't download Friday the 13th. Did it not release over there digitally for you? Did you not want to play with me? Let me know. Inquiring minds. Like me and Cool Greg want to know. Capitalist Pig says regarding PSVR downloads, Job Simulator is still the top VR download from 2016 and 2017. Five of the games from the top 10 in 2016 are still in the top 10. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Owlboy drops on Switch February 13th. Says oh, Jams, I wish it was closer. I was wrong. I can deal with it, but I wish it was closer. Are you going to play Monster Hunter World at all? It doesn't strike me as a Tim game no, at all. No, 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 no. I definitely want to kick the tires on it. Though. Yeah. I was watching the trailer today for that new creature, and I was like, huh. Eh. You know, I've played the Monster Hunter here and there, mm-hmm. and I'm, you know, again, I'm Mr. Multiplayer now. I'm playing, I play with other, other best friends out there, running mm-hmm. around, try to take down these dragons that aren't dragons. Yeah. yeah. Ignacio Rojas says, regarding the new Pokemon game, at E3, at the announcement of the Pokemon companies, the, the Pokemon companies, the dude, said that the game may not release for more than a year. Yeah, exactly. May not. May not. I guarantee Nintendo. The thing about Pokemon. Tell me. Is they play by their own rules. Yep. Because they're not fully owned by Nintendo. They announce games when they want to announce games. They don't typically need to announce them in Nintendo's directs. They do Pokemon directs when they want to. Sure. Um, and the fact that they were at Nintendo's E3 thing, even even just him being like, yo, there's a Pokemon game. Yeah. Like, that, I think, is very telling of the pressure Nintendo's putting on. Nintendo's like, get this fucking game. Where out. they announced Pokemon in the Nintendo showcase, whatever the fuck they call it, E3. Of just the dude sitting there being like, yeah, we're doing a Pokemon game on Switch, like a proper one. No logo, no concept art, no, just a dude. Uh, you know what Pikachu looks like. Just a like. dude saying it's happening. Yeah. Like, that's a little weird. Damn, the indie boy says it's called an imp, Greg. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, finally, Gems the Kuma says, Tim, you're not an asshole. Aww. Guess I was wrong. We called ourselves jackasses, too. Nobody corrected that one, I noticed. Mm-hmm. If you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every week, and a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. <laughs> if you like that, you can watch live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. You can listen later on podcast services around the globe, and you can watch later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames. What's that, Kevin? 
just 500 subs away from 230,000 subs. It would mean a lot if you went over there and subbed or you broke into your mom's house while she slept and then used her computer to sub to us too. She's not subbing to probably that much stuff. So just like add us to her subs, you know? We gotta figure out like a chain mail. Remember chain mail? Mm -hmm. It still exists, I know, on the internet. Mm -hmm. But what if we started it where it was, if you don't po if you don't subscribe to youtube.com slash kind of funny games right now and then tell five other people to subscribe to youtube.com slash kind of funny, then you're gonna, you know, your teeth will fall out. Like that's you, something you know you how many do. moms and grandmas we're gonna get? Yeah, so they'll us. be happy. They'll be like, what's, what's with the Nintendo? Or they'll be like, I played PlayStation VR and here's why I think Greg's wrong about all these games. <laughs> a lot of, I saw a lot of, a lot of moms and grandmas playing PlayStation the, VR. Those are holiday. not the moms and grandmas I'm talking about. I'm talking okay. about the moms and grandmas that, don't know what they're don't doing. Know, don't know. Don't play the video that, games. Yeah. Think that a chain mail say you need to subscribe or your teeth are going to fall out and take it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> they're not playing PSV. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Greg. This is Tim. And until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. <laughs>